we're doing section 2-8, which is related to the naming of alkynes. And um, with alkynes, if you have both an alkene and an alkyne in the same molecule, for example, as we have here, they're both on the terminal ends, you will give precedence to the alkene. So you start the numbering from the side of the alkene. Um, there are two alkenes in this molecule, so it's a hexadiene, substituted in the first and third position, and then you put 5-ein to show the presence of an alkyne. So whenever you have an alkyne, uh, the ending is ein. So you, you took, take the root, for example, if you have but butane with a triple bond in it in the first position, you would say 1-but-ein. Example B. There's a triple bond at the second position. There's a methyl group at the fourth. I was tempted to start numbering it from this side, but you have to start, uh, the higher priority is the alkyne, so you have to number it from the side that's going to give the alkyne priority. Uh, so the alkyne is at the second position. The methyl group is at the fourth, so we call this 4-methyl-2-pentyne. Five carbon chain is the longest. This molecule has eight carbon atoms in it. It's a conjugated alkyne with a triple bond at the second, the fourth, and the sixth position. So we would call it 246-octatriene. Tri meaning there's three uh, triple bonds. Just an aside before we continue. Uh, when you draw molecules, recall that a single bonded carbon has a 109.5 bond angle. A uh, double bonded carbon has a 120 degree angle. And whenever you have a triple bonded carbon, it's going to be straight. It's 180 degrees. So anything coming off an alkyne is going to have to stick straight out. So you don't, you don't ever draw an alkyne like this. They may exist under certain conditions, but it's a straight, it would be strained. And the molecules that are strained are typically not very stable. So whenever you draw an alkyne, you draw it straight across, 180 degree angle. Uh, example D, we have a phenyl group with uh, an acetylene attached to it. I originally named it phenylethyne uh, because there are two carbons with a phenyl group as attached, but I guess because the phenyl group is heavier than the ethyl group, it actually takes precedence. So we, if we're going to follow the IUPAC rules, you have to name it as a, uh, as a benzene with an ethyl group. So when you have H ein as a substituent, you add a YL to the end of it to show that it's a substituent. So it's an ethanyl benzene. That's the correct IUPAC name. And phenyl with a pendant bond is a benzene with uh, wanting to be bonded. A benzene with a pendant bond. If on the other hand, you have a, a benzene with a methyl group and then a pendant bond, then it's called benzyl. These two occur often enough that it's good to memorize those structures. The next section is based on alcohols. Anytime you have an alcohol, the uh, root name has all added to the end of it. Alcohol has a higher priority than alkyl groups or alkenes or even alkynes. So normally when you have an OH in the presence of any one of those other groups, the OH will take precedence. So the numbering will start from the side that gives the OH the lowest number. Take note of the fact that when you have an OH group written in bond line notation, that this line here, the end of this line, does not represent the carbon. This is the first carbon. The OH is attached to the first carbon. Very often students have the impression that there's a carbon there, and they end up adding an extra carbon to the length of the chain. So 2,9-A in our handout is a butane skeleton with an alcohol at the first position and a methyl group at the third, so we call it 3-methyl-butanol. You might also consider putting one butanol. I drop it. When it's one, I don't put the one um, because it's understood that since it's the highest priority, it has to be in the first position. In B, I redrew the molecule as it appears in the handout and then redrew it in bond line notation, but I took this as the first carbon. So I redrew it with this part of the molecule being straight and this part being a substituent. So this part here became the ethyl group over here. 
and then you have six, uh, seven carbons in a chain, and then there's two methyl groups at the fifth position. This would be the fifth carbon here. So that would be called 2-ethyl, right here, 5-5-dimethyl-heptanol. And the heptanol, because the OH is at the first position, I dispense with putting the 1. Uh, you might if you put 1 here, it would uh, remove any ambiguity, but I argue that it's not necessary because if there's no designation, it must mean that it's at the first position. This molecule I originally named this way, but then the answer is actually 3-methyl-5-hexine-2-0. You still get your message across here, but it, this is actually better. It has a nicer flow to it. I'm, I'm never crazy about having to break up words by hyphenating them, but sometimes you, you're forced to do so. The alcohol has the highest priority, and the alkyne group is at the fifth position, so this is a six carbon molecule with a methyl group at the third position and a hydroxyl group at the second position, so we call it, uh, more correctly, 3-methyl-5-hexine-2-ol. This is a cyclohexene with an alcohol on it. Uh, alcohol takes precedence over the alkene, so the numbering starts at, at the alcohol group, uh, the hydroxy group, so it's 2-cyclohexene-ol. This is a diol, so there are two hydroxy groups on a propane molecule. Notice again, there's three carbons. This is not a carbon. This is not a carbon. It is the connection to the oxygen group of the hydroxy. So it's 1,3-propane-diol. And finally, we have um, ethanol with a phenyl group on it. 